Well, this is the time in our service where we uh, get to celebrate the Lord's Supper together, together, and we take communion together. And I'd like to invite you to open up your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If you do not have a Bible, uh, we have some gentlemen here who will make their way down the aisles. We'd love to put one in your hands so that you can have it on your lap and look at the, the truth within with us. Just raise your hand. We'll get that to you. If you don't have a Bible, that's our gift to you. That's for you to keep. It has been 21 years this week of having as our weekly practice as a church to take communion together. And there's no way to quantify what the Lord has done in our lives together through the weekly reminder of what he has done in the gospel. To come together and in unity together, remember our Savior with intentionality To remember his body that was broken and his blood that was shed and poured out is truly profound. And as I and those who are going to Gilbert Bible Church get to do that one last time as our regular practice together with all of you, I would like to direct your attention to 1 Corinthians 15. Starting in verse 1, and we'll work through verse 4. Paul writes this, 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 1. He says, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance... What I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. By God's grace, we as a church know and love the gospel, which Paul says here is of first importance. These believers in Corinth, they have received it. They have embraced it. It is on the gospel that they stand. This is so absolutely crucial for the believer that the gospel would have this role in one's life. The temptation is ever present. And really every other religion is built upon standing upon your own righteousness, your own works, your own deeds to be good enough. But the gospel, which is what saves you, is absolutely crucial because in the gospel, your acceptance of the gospel requires accepting the reality that you cannot be good enough. You have nothing in and of yourself to stand on. It is to accept you have no righteousness to bring to the table. It is to agree with God that you are a sinner in need of grace. You are a sinner deserving the wrath and just judgment of God for your sins. Every single one is condemnable. And no act of your own righteousness can atone for your sin. What do you need? What do I need? A substitute who would die in our place. Who would take the wrath of God upon himself for us. What do we need? We need a savior who would give to you an alien righteousness. That is a righteousness that you could never possess on your own. A righteousness that you could never conjure up. A righteousness that you or I could never produce. And what have we been given? Look at verse 3. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. What more glorious truth could ever be communicated than that? There's no greater need that any one of us would ever have, will ever have, could ever have, than for a substitute to die in our place for our sins. His sacrifice was fully sufficient, where ours would only lack. He died for our sins. He was buried and he was raised. He took upon himself the wrath of God. His sacrifice was accepted by the father and he rose from the grave. He conquered death. 
And why is this of first importance? Why is this gospel that Paul has preached, why is it crucial? Why is it of utmost importance? Because we could never save ourselves. It is by this gospel that we are saved. It is on this gospel that we stand. We have no righteousness in and of ourselves to stand on. We needed Christ. But now, because of Christ... As 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, Jesus, who knew no sin, was made sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We are covered in Christ's righteousness as the free gift of God in the gospel through Christ. We would have nothing to give us hope of salvation and nothing to stand on if it were not for Christ. If it was dependent on us, we would have no hope. But because of Christ, we have a certain hope. What a wonderful truth this is. Grace Bible Church, never, never loosen your white knuckle grip on the gospel. Hold to it. Rejoice in it. Cling to it. Love the Lord of the gospel. Depend upon him. And this morning, as we join together in taking the bread and the cup, what do we do? We remember Christ's body. We remember his sacrifice. We remember his body that was crushed. And in a moment, the men are going to pass out the cracker, the bread. And it's a symbol to remind us of Christ, of his body that was crushed. We'll take some juice and it's a symbol. It's a reminder of his blood that was shed so that we might find the unfathomable love of God and be reconciled to God through Christ. Now we live for Christ. We seek to be holy as our great God is holy. We do it out of love for God. We do it out of thankfulness, not fear of condemnation. What a gift the Lord has given to us in his son. What a precious gift to join together and to recognize and proclaim his work, his death, which is the only work that would ever be accepted by the father. What a privilege to get to do this together. And what a joy to reflect on the way that the Lord has used his gospel work in the lives of those individually in this church, but much more how the lives of individually have been joined together and produced in this church what is pleasing to the Lord. What a, what a precious evidence of the Lord's work. It is all because of him. So this morning, I encourage you to take these things to reflect on Christ's work and to give thanks for Christ. If you're with us today or visiting and you do not know Christ as your savior in this way, then we'd ask for you to let the bread and the juice just pass by and to not take. This is a time for believers to remember who Christ is and what he has accomplished. And if that's not you, we would ask simply that you just let it pass by. But we would also plead with you to talk to somebody, talk to me or anyone here who knows the Lord about what it means to have a personal relationship with Christ, to depend upon him as the perfect substitute for the sins that you have committed before a holy and righteous God. There's nothing else we'd rather talk to you about or share with you than those truths. So men, come and serve us. Grace Bible Church, as your heart is prepared, take the bread and the cup on your own. Tom will be up in a few moments to pray.